Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor for episode 90. Already, wow, getting close to 100. It's going to take me a couple more months to get that. Maybe a quarter to it. Thanks anyway for taking the time uh, out of your lockdown schedule and or if you're working to watch me. Appreciate that. Hope everybody's staying safe. Got a few things that I've been following over the last week or so. So let me get right into it. All right, the first story that I'm covering is global plug-in uh, EV sales. As you folks know, I like to see what's going on and talk about what's going on around the world. Not so much China, of course, because it's a huge market, but everywhere else, it's not just one vendor, one country. It is the world, this phenomenon. And global plug-in sales were okay. They were better than expected for the first quarter, but of course, down year over year because of the pandemic. Now, they were down about 15% from first quarter of last year to a total volume of around 460,000 units globally. That's for all plug-ins. 74% of that was bad all battery electric vehicles. So the vast majority now of plugins are becoming all electric, which they should be, which is great. So it's about 2% market share as we're trending right now. Uh, top vehicle in the quarter, no surprise, Tesla Model 3, somewhere around 72,000, 71,000 and change units or so, uh, followed by the Renault Zoe being the second at about 20, almost 21,000. We got Nissan Leaf in third for uh, six, it's about 17000 And uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander, you know, I did a review on that plug-in hybrid electric. Still the world's uh, number one plug-in hybrid electric selling vehicle at uh, the first quarter, hundred uh, sorry, 12,000 units. Uh, VW e-Golf still going through. Audi e-tron, BMW, a plug-in hybrid. Then we've got our Kona from, uh, from Hyundai. Uh, Peugeot 208, all electric, and uh, then finally a BYD Chinese brand that's uh, hit the top 10. Interesting to see only one Chinese brand in that top 10 because of all the manufacturing and retail that got shut down for the first quarter for them this year, which uh, which made it very strong. Number one brand, Tesla, uh, Nissan's number 10, and then a whole slew in the middle there. So, uh, you know, we do fully expect that the f second quarter of this year is going to be pretty well disastrous for the automobile marketplace. Everything's going to be way down, including EV sales. Uh, last year, we did about 2.2 million, just over 2.2 million plug-in sales globally at uh, 460,000 right now for the first quarter, less than that, most likely for the second quarter with some rebounding and uh, in the third and fourth quarters. Uh, I think we'll be hard pressed to make a million and a half to a million seven, million eight plug-in uh, sales globally for this year. So that's my prediction, somewhere around a million and a half. But uh, you know that won't be that bad considering the circumstances. Anyway, keep we'll keep uh, I'll keep tracking this as I like to as the numbers come out, and I hope you find that helpful. Quick news about Chatamo. Chatamo is not dead. A lot of people think it is. In fact, the association is now coming out with a version 3 standard of the Chatamo uh, adapter protocol. It's going to support over 500 kilowatts of charging. Originally, they had a higher number, but they've downshifted that down to 500. Remember, you know, this is being driven forward mainly by the Asian countries, specifically Japan and China, where they're where really Chatamo is a huge marketplace. In fact, if you didn't know, Chatamo is the number one connector type globally when you look at it. Now, CCS is popular in Europe and in North America. It's becoming the standard. And of course, Tesla has their own. So those are kind of the three that are out there. But certainly no lack of Chatamo vehicles and Chatamo continues to be developed. So uh, also in uh, 2021, next year, the first vehicles compatible with this new standard should start uh, being launched. Um, it doesn't require a really big you know, thick cable. In fact, it can uh, uses a more compact and thinner cable. Has liquid cooling um, in that cable as well. And uh, this will be. Uh, you can still uh, use this to charge other Chatamo vehicles uh, and other vehicles that support Chatamo two and one. Uh, GB slash T, which I believe is the Chinese standard, and possibly CCS for the use of a adapter or, or something like that. So that'll be out there. Um, so again, you know, other than uh, than the Asian markets, uh, you know, Chatamo, Chatamo is still pretty big in those markets. It's 90%, 90%. There you go. That's the number I was looking for of the global market. So good to see continued evolution of that. Staying on the Asian trend, BYD, Chinese company, officially has now come out and said they're going to start launching sales of their product in Europe. Sometime this year, Norway is going to be the first country they're pegging. They're going to enter with this uh, their SUV. It's an all-electric vehicle called the Tang EV600 is what they plan on introducing. Um, the Tang EV600, it's a kind of a mid-size uh, all-electric SUV type vehicle. Um, range, we don't know. Somewhere, you know, NEDC is somewhere in the 520 kilometer range. 
with a battery pack of 82.8 kilowatt hours. So let's say realistically 400 and something kilometers, maybe 450, 430, something like that. You can do the conversion to miles. Um, what else is they're talking about? So they want to launch in Norway this year, probably by the end of this year. No really other pricing or anything like that at this point. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to see BYD. They make some quality products. I'm glad to see that they're migrating out of China and uh, focusing their consumer automobiles into other markets. And staying in Europe, VW, I talked about the ID3, that they're back ma starting manufacturing of those in the Zwickauer plant in Germany. Um, about 50 units a day and slowly scaling up. Well, next month on June 17th, VW will open the order book. So for those that have pre-orders or pre-reservations, uh, excuse me, for the, the first editions, about 30,000 or so of those first editions of the ID3s, they're going to open the order books, let you configure and, and finalize your orders there so that they can start deliveries in the summer of 2020. Hopefully that doesn't shift too much, but because they're already pre, uh, start have started production, uh, they should be able to uh, to have some inventory ready for those deliveries. As just as long as the markets open up for people to accept them, it should be okay. And we are starting to see that now in a lot of the European countries. So good, to, good that VW has resumed, of course, production, and that people will start seeing these in the summer. And I'm sure we'll see a slew slew of videos of people. Uh, uh, praising the ID3 because I really do think it's a great vehicle and I think VW is doing something really well here. Now I've talked about the Audi Sportback or e-tron Sportback before. It's now uh, going to be coming to the U.S. Finally, Audi has um, announced that they revealed pricing. Uh, it's going to be about seventy-seven thousand four hundred as a starting MSRP U.S. dollars, of course, for this uh, uh, coupe uh, with a ninety-five kilowatt-hour battery pack. In Europe, uh, it'll have come with a seventy-one, so it's interesting that it'll be a smaller battery pack there. In their fifty-five quattro version, as they call it, in Europe it'll be a fifty quattro version. EPA range of 218 miles 351 kilometers um, probably a little lean but again I think the EPA sometimes are lower than what uh, many times in fact are lower than what you can actually eke out of these vehicles in nice conditions uh, so good to see that this will start coming out in the US no idea of uh, when these are going to be delivering or all that kind of stuff but uh, I take it that uh, it'll be the summertime that you can start ordering these maybe you can even go to your dealers now and put in pre-orders and maybe start seeing something in the late summer or the fall a couple photos have surfaced on the BMW iX3 and I've talked a lot about that in the past uh, basically taking their X3 and uh, electrifying it with the i brand full electric vehicle so here's a couple of pictures uh, showing the front and three rear quarters this is uh, leaked by somebody basically I think that the main takeaway is it hasn't really changed from much from the concept that came out a year or so ago uh, should have a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack giving it a WLTP range of 440 kilometers or 273 miles downshift that down to maybe two and a quarter miles somewhere in the 400 kilometer range or so a single motor only that it's a i doubt it'll come out in a dual a dual motor doesn't really need it. it's not that big of a vehicle uh, 282 horsepower and that kind of stuff and also uh, take note that these are all going to be built in china for the world so not just for the chinese market but they will be shipped around the world a lot of uh, oems now are taking their manufacturing to china and building vehicles that are being shipped worldwide and bmw is no exception I think on one of the few uh, previous shows, I showed you uh, some uh, rent, some stuff I saw at the car show. I remember back February, and Lexus had their uh, one of their all electric concepts out, and I talked about them not really doing much. Well, looks like they're finally going to do something. They're announcing their first all electric Lexus vehicle for the Chinese market. No, no surprise, it's a huge market. Um, it's called the uh, UX 300E crossover. It's going to be going to be equipped with a just under 55 kilowatt hour battery pack for about 400 kilometers or 249 miles of any DC range. So drop that down to maybe 200 quarter, 210 miles or so, and maybe 350 kilometers, something like that. Uh, in the 50 to 55 thousand dollar US ballpark price for something like this. Um, it's going to originally start uh, being delivered in China and then there's also plans to bring it to Europe and Japan early next year. Again, as I mentioned, keep timelines that you hear from anybody with a grain of salt because what's going on, everything is just being shifted, but that's the plan as it stands right now. They want to, and then really they haven't said much about North America, so it doesn't sound like this is going to come to North America anytime soon. But anyway, I'm glad to see Lexus taking some steps forward. Now, I haven't talked about Bollinger for quite some time. Of course, they came out a year or so ago with their 
electric all electric truck chassis that they're continuing to to bring to production and market well they've also talked about um uh, the first class three electric truck chassis that they're going to that they are going to bring to market for primarily for the commercial truck uh, arena um it's going to uh, come with either two or four door designs um and you can use it for commercial truck conversions as well it's called the b2 uh, chassis cab uh, and it's got features like a 5,000 pound payload, uh, some of the other specs on this, 120 kilowatt hour battery packs, all wheel uh, drivetrains, all terrain capabilities as well with dual motors. Now, Bollinger says that this B2 chassis will be available to commercial outfitters in late 2021, no pricing or anything yet. Uh, again, it's a great market to go after, but I'm glad that they're planning this because there is certainly a viable market for it. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for watching as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. I appreciate everybody watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. Of course, on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's very important. Thanks a big time for Patreon supporters. You all know who you are, and all your names are at the end of the episode here coming up as a thank you. By the way, I do that every single show. I put all the names up there that I haven't. I've done that since the beginning. It's very important for me to recognize that. So thank you very much for that. Everybody, again, stay safe. It's really important to continue to follow public health guidelines in your areas. I know some jurisdictions are starting to open up. In my opinion, maybe a bit too soon. So, you know, if you're concerned, take precautions, wash hands, wear a mask. You know, you won't look like uh, somebody from outer space walking around in the mask. That is kind of the norm, new norm look right now. Uh, as we're out and about, even when I go out shopping and stuff, I wear a mask just in case. So stay safe, everybody, and follow those guidelines. Again, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, spend with me and, and get some updates on what's going on in the EV market. And until the next time, that's it for the show. Until the next time we get together, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.